CBS 6 News starts now. Devastation in Mississippi. At least two dozen people lose their lives when a tornado touches down. We have the latest details on search and recovery efforts. And the DA pursuing a much talked about criminal investigation into former President Trump receives a death threat. How his community is rallying behind him as pressure mounts. Plus, CBS 6 investigates a bill that could give judges in New York new power. What some lawmakers say they should be able to consider before a suspect is set free. Good evening, everybody. I am Tom Eschen. Developing now here tonight, the Capital Region still in shock over the massive fire in Albany on Thursday night that left the old Doan Stewart School in rubble. You're looking here at Sky Eye 6 drone footage showing just how extensive the damage was. As cleanup and the investigation into the cause of the fire continue, community members are left wondering, could this same fate await the other vacant historic buildings left largely uncared for in the city? CBS 6 is digging deep into that question tonight by looking into another Albany landmark. As our Emma Quinn reports, residents hope this church headed toward revitalization instead of ruin. St. Joseph's Church is a historic landmark for Albany. It's a really nice architecture. It's a nice building. The 162-year-old church is currently owned by the city of Albany. It was previously owned by the Albany Historic Foundation, who invested grant money to preserve the structure. So it's very different than Kenwood in a lot of ways. The city owns it. They've been maintaining it and it's a much easier building to button up. But you know, you can see over here that there's there's windows that are that are broken and open. The city and residents have hopes of giving it new life and a different outlook than the Kenwood Commons, formerly Doan Stewart School. The former school caught fire Thursday evening and crews were demolishing what was left Friday due to the fire damage. Architecturally significant and very, you know, beautiful. Um, but but St. Joe's on the exterior really, you know, draws you in from from a distance. An internet search shows the church property is listed for sale at $100,000. The owner is willing to sell and they're looking for buyers. This one, the reuses are more difficult, essentially one large space. Um, you know, with with Kenwood, the issue was at first they were asking too much and then the condition became terrible after the, the, the owner kind of abandoned their work. Residents hopeful a buyer can bring new life to these old bones. Prominent structure. Reporting in Albany, Emma Quinn, CBS 6 News. Well, we take a look outside now as Craig Adams joins us. A live look first outside at Saratoga Springs this evening. Craig. Felt a little bit more like winter today, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it felt like it too, with uh, temperatures pretty much in the 30s for the most part, although Albany did manage to briefly get to 41 this morning. Right now, the radar shows that we have still a combination of some rain and a little bit of sleet mixed in over the northern areas. The precipitation not as steady as it was earlier, as you can see how snow was the initial component, and then it kind of transitioned to more of a rain and mixture. I think we'll hold on to some showers about the area off and on into tonight. The main low pressure system is back here circulating over the Great Lakes. Some additional moisture out over western New York State still could come through tonight with, again, a few more showers. It's even possible there might even be a rumble of thunder in a couple of spots as well. Here's the view from our Fryhofer Skycam in Schenectady looking murky. 35 degrees, a bit breezy out there as well. All right, our forecast tonight calling for cloudy skies, some lingering rain, maybe a rumble of thunder, low and mid 30s. Tomorrow, it looks to be better than today, but we've got an active week ahead. We'll tell you more about that coming up in a few minutes, Tom. Thank you, Craig. Officials say a powerful tornado has killed at least 26 people and left at least four others missing. The extreme weather ripping through the southeast part of our country with Mississippi hit the hardest. You can see this footage here, the tornado leveling homes, uprooting trees, leaving all kinds of other destruction. Christian Benavides brings us this full report from one of the most hard hit areas. The devastating tornado brought death and destruction to a wide stretch of Mississippi and other parts of the Deep South. We lost everything, but we got our life. As the twister wiped out neighborhoods, the National Weather Service says it apparently remained on the ground for more than an hour. 
The tornado touched down in Rolling Fork in western Mississippi Friday night and kept going to other towns across the region. Now houses sit in ruins, toppled trees are all around, and flipped cars and even big trucks littered the landscape. When daylight broke in Silver City, Mississippi, the tornado's disastrous impact became all the more evident. It was just devastating last night. Fish black dark, and, uh, trying to get everybody out. We could get out. Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves declared a state of emergency in all counties hit by the deadly weather. President Biden and the First Lady issued a statement saying they are praying for the loved ones of victims. The president also says he spoke to the FEMA administrator who has deployed emergency response resources and personnel to Mississippi. Christian Benavides, CBS News, Silver City, Mississippi. Now in Pennsylvania, police say one person has miraculously been found alive in the aftermath of a massive explosion at a chocolate factory. That explosion happened Friday, just before 5 p.m. Rescue and recovery efforts have been happening since then. At this point, at least two people are confirmed to have been killed, five others still missing. The R.M. Palmer Company had been making candy at this West Reading plant since 1959. The building is believed to be a total loss. The cause of the blast still under investigation. Well, Americans are watching to see if an indictment of former President Donald Trump is coming. And as the grand jury continues looking into alleged hush money, reportedly paid to adult film actress Stormy Daniels, the prosecutor behind their work, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, has received a death threat. In response to this and the strong rhetoric the former president has been using to condemn the investigation, a prayer vigil was held today in New York City. Civil rights activist Reverend Al Sharpton led the gathering. Whatever the decision, I want us to pray for his safety. I'm calling on all churches tomorrow all houses of worship to pray for the family and life of Alvin Bragg. The death threat we mentioned was mailed to the DA's office Friday. The letter contained a white powder that officials say turned out to be harmless. We will, of course, keep tabs on the grand jury investigation throughout the weekend, throughout the week ahead, and send a breaking news alert once a decision is reached. You can get that notification by downloading our free news app. Well, the demand at food pantries has been at record levels the past few years, which means food banks need to keep their supply up. And today, thousands in Cahos help fill the shelves by filling their stomachs with macaroni and cheese. And yes, that's me eating it. I got to be a judge. It was great. More than 20 different mac and cheese vendors doling out their best recipes. Almost 1,500 tickets sold. The 13th time they held this event. And in that time, more than a half million dollars raised for the food bank. This year, expecting about 60000 to help serve people from Canada down to Rockland County. We love this, and we have to say a big thank you to the city of Cohoes. This is our second year with the city, and they have done a phenomenal job for us. We love being on Ramson Street. The judges, we chose Mess Hall's pulled pork mac and cheese as its winner. That's a look at it right there, the onion ring on top. The People's Choice went to 110 Grill, who had their own version of a pulled pork mac and cheese. Meanwhile, as many as 160 runners doing something a little different, getting competitive for a good cause in Schenectady Central Park today. The 14th Run for Your Life, benefiting the Schenectady Firefighters Cancer Foundation, which provides financial support to firefighters dealing with that devastating diagnosis. Organizers of the race tell us the foundation also works hard to spread awareness among firefighters about the risks and the dangers. Proper use of turnout gear and showers can be critical when it comes to cutting down on carcinogens that can be carried away from a fire scene. Well, it's a question that's been the subject of fierce political debate in New York for years now. How much discretion should judges have to keep a suspect behind bars before trial? Coming up, we take a look at one of the bills being considered that could tackle that question and reshape criminal justice reform in our state. Plus. The first weekend of spring is here, and even though it's a little too chilly for flowers to bloom outside, an event at HVCC has you covered. Everything you need to know if you're planning to check out the Garden Expo. Welcome back. New legislation being proposed by a Republican state senator would reform New York's criminal justice reform by allowing judges to consider the potential dangerousness of suspects before releasing them. CBS 6's Kalani Aaron set out to learn more. 
The term dangerous may be confusing and mean different things to different people. Emma, how would you define dangerousness? Um, I think it's anybody who wants to be aggressive towards himself or for um, towards others in the community. But I would say that dangerous for me implies violence. Uh, I, I think that petty drug use or shoplifting and stuff, that doesn't qualify as dangerous. It's like shootings, muggings, um, anything that's anyone coming up to me and interfering with me when I'm walking home, um, that's what I consider crime. Rensselaer County District Attorney Mary Pat Donnelly, who is a Democrat and a former town justice, says dangerousness to her breaks down to a multitude of factors that a judge could see as a reason to keep someone behind bars before trial. It would take some work to get to a point where that could be evaluated objectively, but I do think in certain circumstances for a judge to be able to articulate because of A, B, C, and D, I find there is a, a, a threat to the community's safety and for that reason, this person needs to be remanded. Since 2020's statewide bail reform took effect, judges have been barred from considering the dangerousness of defendants, including the risk they may pose to victims when ordering them held or releasing them without bail. New legislation, if approved, would expressly allow judges to jail those determined to be dangerous at times with no bond. Republican State Senator Patricia Canzanieri Fitzpatrick is introducing this bill. So far, there is no sponsor in the Senate, but there is one in the Assembly. In a statement, Canzanieri Fitzpatrick argues, quote, Judges are chosen for their ability to thoughtfully apply the law, and this bill would place the power of discretion back in their hands where it belongs, unquote. The senator is hopeful for passage of the legislation in the final enacted state budget. Reporting for CBS 6 News. I'm Kalani Aaron. Thanks, Kalani. Spring is coming eventually. And to get ready for warmer days, thousands are flocking to the Capital Region for the annual Flower and Garden Expo. Hudson Valley Community College, the host for about 15,000 people between today and tomorrow. They paused for a couple of years during COVID. They used last year as a rebuilding year, now back to full strength this weekend. More than 200 exhibitors featuring floral and garden exhibits, a marketplace, seminars and demos, something they've been doing a long time. Decades. A small group of Wildwood volunteers started it really small in 1988, and now it's grown every year since. Tomorrow, they're open from 10 to 5. Tickets online are at the door for $15 to get your garden fix. Perfect transition into the weather with Craig Adams, and tomorrow probably will look more like garden weather, right, compared to today. You know, we had some spring-like weather earlier this week. Yeah. It was around 60 degrees a few days back. The problem is it made today feel very cold. Yeah, <laughs> and with snow falling, it definitely yeah, did it not didn't make help. it look all that spring-like. <laughs> it's did true. It. 41 today, briefly in Albany. Most of the day, the temperature held in the 30s. Our normal high should be just shy of 50 degrees. As we take a look at how things were before the snow and rain came in, it was a pretty sky. Look at this view here captured by Suzanne Ridgway over in Castleton on Hudson. And uh, that was not the only place that saw these colorful sky conditions. Check out things in Schoharie County. Tom Folan sending this view in of how the sky looked in Warnerville a little before sunrise. So things started off quiet enough, but once we moved a bit beyond sunrise, uh, well, the snow and rain came on in. Here's the view in Troy right now, 40 degrees, overcast skies at the present time. As we check out things in Glens Falls, only 33. There is some rain there. Has been a little bit of uh, sleet and snow mixed in, too. And as we uh, check out one more view, there's Lake George, 33 degrees, looking pretty murky there as of the current hour. All right, on the radar, we can see some areas of lingering rain mixed with a little bit of sleet and perhaps even some pockets of freezing rain up over the Adirondacks. Uh, locally, clouds, a bit of drizzle out there. As we look further west, there's additional showers, and so we will maintain the chance of what I think will be rain showers here locally as we progress further into the evening. To the north, those rain showers could very well be mixed with a little bit of sleet. And don't be surprised if you hear a rumble of thunder as well. There's a fair amount of energy in the atmosphere back to the west, and it may cause the uh, atmosphere to uh, cause a few brief rumbles of thunder in spots, too. Here's what's happening. We've got a low-pressure system working its way up into Lake Huron and the frontal system moving out into the region. And as it does so, we've got 
the moisture that's been circulating over the area today. Now, we'll be on the back side of the front tomorrow, and the net result will be drier air coming in. So it'll be a better day, but it's going to be windy for sure. Working through tonight, we still see some showers around the area. Into tomorrow, though, it's dry for most of us. The only exception up in the Adirondacks, probably a few lingering flurries there. But once we get into the middle and later part of the afternoon, even those will probably end. And we'll be looking at mixed sun and clouds across the local area the bulk of the day tomorrow, again, with a brisk wind blowing. Now, watch what happens. Tomorrow night, pretty quiet. But then on Monday, the clouds are quickly advancing. The precipitation looks to organize, at least on our model simulations in the afternoon. This is probably a bit too fast. I can see it happening in the evening hours, but it does look like some rain will develop into Monday night and it could transition to some snow too, especially in the higher terrain before everything pushes off as we head into Tuesday morning. So the pattern is going to be staying active once again this week as we round out the end of March. Cloudy tonight, some lingering rain, a rumble of thunder is possible, 32 to 37. Then we get into tomorrow, it'll be a day that's going to be windy, mixed sun and clouds. I think we're up around 50 in the capital region, 40s in the higher terrain, and dry except for a few flurries of the Adirondacks. Let's check out the seven-day trend. Monday, the clouds increasing, and again, the chance of some rain and some snow mixed too, especially in the higher terrain for Monday night. Any precipitation ends early Tuesday, then we're drying out. It looks dry on Wednesday before another disturbance comes in Wednesday night with a chance of some mixed rain and snow. Dry for Thursday as that system quickly departs, but another one arrives later Friday with rain likely, with that rain probably continuing into the first half of next weekend. All right, thanks, Craig. Coming up in sports, we've got a full slate of lacrosse for you. College season is starting to kick up. See who came away with a win today right after the break. CBS 6 Sports, sponsored by your local Upstate Chevy dealers. Hey, I'm AJ Pankowski. Tonight in sports, it may not feel like it right now outside, but the spring sports seasons are beginning to heat up. Lots of college lacrosse action from around the Capital Region earlier this afternoon. So let's jump right in to see who came away with some early season wins. In Division Three, it's fifth-ranked Union at home against seventh-ranked St. Lawrence. The Dutchmen were dominant. It was a two-man show. Zach Davis, Michael Shaw, each with five goals. That's Davis with the laser for the score. Those two made a top-ten team in the nation look like nothing. Union didn't have to worry about this one being a close game at all. And check this one out. The most impressive goal. Michael Shaw. No look behind the back. What a shot. That could be a Sports Center top 10 right there. The Dutchman double up St. Lawrence in a statement win 12 to 6. U Albany had a doubleheader today. The men's team on the road facing the back to back American East champs out of Vermont. This game was the Brock Haley show. The Catamounts was scoring from all over the place. In just the first quarter alone, he'd had a hat trick as Vermont went up 5-0, and that was a lead that the Great Danes could not surmount. And from there, Haley added three more goals to his tally. A six-goal game for him. The kid can score at will. UAlbany drops their eighth straight game against Vermont, 14-7, and they're now 2-5 on the season. As for the women's team, they face Vermont at home. The Lady Great Danes had a little bit more luck than the men's team did. Back and forth game the entire way. But whenever UAlbany needed a goal, they looked for Sean Lee Wallace and Sarah Falk. Both had hat tricks. And the second quarter was the pivotal one. A 4-0 quarter from the Lady Great Danes. And in the second half, UAlbany, they went punch for punch, maintained their lead, and walked away with a conference opening win 12-9. Sienna, they also had a doubleheader, the men's team at Long Island University. The Saints held the lead through the first quarter, mainly because of Pratt Reynolds' four goals. But Long Island took over from there. Sienna would be down at the break, trying to play catch up the rest of the way. They made it interesting. Three-goal game, just over two minutes left, but they ran out of time. Sienna scores right there to cut the lead to two, but there's only 10 seconds left, and that's going to do it. The Saints fall to Long Island, 
13 to 11. The Siena women's team at Iona, and we had history made in this one. Have a day, Mary Soares, the fifth year senior midfielder, was dominant. We already had a six goal performance today from Brock Haley, Vermont. Well, we've got another source scoring at will, and when it came to history, here it is. At the beginning of the fourth quarter, all tied up at nine apiece, Soares sprints down and scores. That goal right there gets her to the 200 career point club for Siena women's lacrosse, and to top it off, the Lady Saints start conference play with a win 13 to 9. And finally, we've got some basketball as well. First in high school play, New York State Federation of Champions Tournament in Class A semis. Albany Academy beat Tap and Z 59 to 55. They're going to be in the championship tomorrow. We'll be there. And also, two March Madness games with a spot in the final four on the line for both. One just started, Florida State or Florida Atlantic and Kansas State. And after that one wraps up, we've got our Andre Jackson Jr., Amsterdam native, and UConn taking on Gonzaga. More updates to come. It's been a wild tournament, guys. How about spring sports? like to see that, of course. It's not really feeling like spring. And not there's going to snow on Monday a little bit, maybe? Um, maybe Mix? Monday evening. All right. Be, yeah. well, that's Monday night. Not over yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is over. We'll be back at 11. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.